Thank you, Chairman. Welcome, Attorney General Garland. Um, two topics. Uh, the first is um, executive privilege. Uh, we've been through a rather um, bleak period with regard to executive privilege. I think you could call it the anything goes pr uh, period in which any assertion of executive privilege, no matter how fanciful or preposterous, was essentially allowed to stand in very significant departure from the law that has been out there for years regarding executive privilege. And at the same time that the substance of executive privilege was being um, expanded beyond recognition, um, the procedure for evaluating executive procedure determinations was completely ignored. And this is a procedure that was established by President Reagan's White House. So we now have a situation in which there is very substantial destruction and disarray in the area of executive privilege determinations. And um, as you know, under the Reagan memo, the Department of Justice had a role, kind of as an arbiter, to be the honest broker between whatever executive agency was objecting and whatever congressional committee was pursuing information. Um, that role completely fell apart in the last administration, um, and it needs to be rebuilt in some predictable fashion. The role of the courts has become highly problematic um, because delay is very often dispositive in these matters, and the courts are now a haven for delay with respect to executive privilege determinations. So I think we need to look at that as well. Uh, Senator Kennedy and I had a hearing on this executive privilege problem in our court subcommittee. Uh, the Department of Justice was not represented at that hearing, but I would like to ask you to detail somebody from the Department of Justice to talk to Senator Kennedy and me about this executive privilege problem and work with us on trying to figure out a solution, making the role of the Department of Justice more clear and transparent and perhaps embodying it in rule or regulation or law, and trying to figure out how to accelerate at the courts a way to get quicker decisions, because otherwise, as I said, delay is just dispositive and we lose not because we're wrong, but because we're delayed. Would you have somebody be our point of contact on that, please? When I say detail, I don't mean onto our payroll. You know, I just mean I as a point of contact. Yes, absolutely, of course. Great. Thank you. Next. I've been pursuing the question of the Department's investigation into January 6th since pretty early days, starting with a letter in January 8th that asked about the resources that were being deployed into this investigation and whether a task force, uh, prosecution task force was being set up and so forth. And then uh, another letter, February 24th, with, regarding to, uh, with regard to uh, domestic uh, extremist violence groups, potential role. We've learned a little bit more now, and we've learned that there was a lot of money sloshing around in the background behind the January 6th rally and behind the raid, the riot in the Capitol. For instance, we know that the Bradley Foundation, which is a big funder, um, gave money to Turning Point USA and to Public Interest Legal Foundation. Um, and it gets even more interesting because Turning Point USA has a twin called Turning Point Action, 501c3, 501c4 combo, which also got money from the Judicial Crisis Network to support the so-called Italy Gate the debunked Italy Gate theory. At the same time, the Public Interest Legal Foundation had as its director Mr. Eastman, who was cranking out his fanciful memo for President Trump how to overturn uh, the election. Um, the Judicial Crisis Network is the same thing from a corporate standpoint as something called the Honest Elections Project, which was bringing a, a fanciful case in Pennsylvania regarding election fraud. And the Judicial Crisis Network was also funding RAGA, the, Rhode Island, the Republican Attorney General's Association, which was making robocalls to get people to come to the riot. 
Now, I don't know what's going on behind all of that, but I am hoping that the due diligence of the FBI is being deployed not just to the characters who trespassed in the Capitol that day and who engaged in violent acts, but that you're taking the look you would properly take at any case involving players behind the scenes, funders of the enterprise, and so forth, in this matter as well. And there's been no decision to say, we're limiting this case just to the people in the building that day. We're not going to take a serious look at anybody behind it. Senator, I'm very limited as to what I can say. I understand we that. We have a criminal investigation going forward. Please tell me it has not been constrained only to people in the yes. Capitol. Uh, the the investigation is being conducted by the prosecutors in the U.S. Attorney's Office and by the FBI field office. We have not constrained them in any way. Great. And the old doctrine of follow the money, which is a well-established principle of prosecution, is it's fair, uh, it's fair to alive say, and well. It's fair to say that all investigative techniques of which you're familiar uh, and some maybe that you're not uh, familiar with because they post-date your time, are all being uh, pursued in this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman.